Hello everybody, welcome back to Calm Lands. It is still April, and we still have a lot of stuff left to do. So let's get to it. We need to lime those, well that field now, it's one big field now. So we need to lime that. And um, we also need to seed this field and our new fields. And I'm really not looking forward to doing that with uh, six meter implements. So we're going to sell off some things and we're going to buy some new things. First thing I want to do is sell this uh, spreader. It's got lime in it at the moment. So let's unload that. And sell. Fertilizer spreaders. And you get five grand for it. Not terrible. And in its place, we're going to go with uh, the one that has a much higher capacity. We're going to go with the Kubota. And we'll do that in New Holland Blue, of course. Keep the black cover. We're going to go for the XL capacity, which is 10,000 liters. That should last a lot longer when we're spreading lime. So I'm going to buy that for 29.5. And we'll get the tractor started spreading lime. All right, let's see if 8,000 liters is enough for this whole field. I have a feeling it's not going to be, <laughs> but we'll see. I always have trouble judging this, so we'll see what happens. I got pretty close. Now, is it going to keep going? Yes, yes it is. Although it doesn't seem to be affecting this field. Hang on. So that needs lime. Let's go behind the tractor. And it still needs lime. So I'm wondering, do we have to plow that grass? I sure thought I could lime that. But apparently I cannot. All right, I'm gonna get the Unimog plowing the rest of this field. There's no sense spreading lime on it if it's not going to do any good. And I don't want to reseed a field that needs lime. I want to get it done because it'll improve our yield and we won't have to do it again for a while. So let's get to plowing. Not going to be fast, but it'll get done. All right, so I'm going to drop this. We'll get back to liming this field as soon as it's all plowed. We got other things we can do right now. Drop this off over here out of the way. Now we're going to address our cedar slash planter. Let me get these out of the way and emptied. I'm going to go ahead and sell this. Cedars, sell. You've been good to us, but your time is done. 
and I want to back in here and grab this planter. We are no longer going to plant anything that requires a planter, I don't think. Um, and I had a thought about maybe planting some sunflowers, but uh, I, I don't know that that's going to be part of the plan anytime soon. So we're going to get this thing emptied and sold. It's not going to sell for very much, but every little bit helps. So we're going to go ahead and sell the planter. It's 79 for it. Not terrible. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to buy ourselves a cedar that has a wider working width. And we have a couple of choices. The uh, Solitaire 12 is 12 meters, and this is very, very tempting. Uh, it We can pull it with 180 horsepower. I think our tractor is 185, 175. Okay, then I'm glad I didn't buy that. So we're going to go down here, and we're going to... Uh, 12 meters is just too wide, I think, for us. So we are going to go down here and grab the... 8 meter version of that. 8 meters, 6 meters, it doesn't sound like that much more. But if you think about it, that's uh, to about 25% more. So we are going to go faster with our seeding. And I think in the long run, that's really going to help us out. So we're going to buy this for 77. And we'll just keep it in its Limkin Blue. 5,800 liters, that's a really good capacity. 120 horsepower to pull it, eight meter working width. We are gonna have to go back and fertilize twice, but I think with our fertilizer spreader, we're not gonna have to stop because it's got a large enough capacity and it's got a 42 meter spread. We can do any field we have in about four passes. So I don't think that's gonna be an issue. So we're gonna go ahead and buy this. It's expensive, but I think in the long run, it's going to be well worth it. So we are going to take our new cedar and we're going to get as close to full as we can from the jumble of stuff that we have here on the yard. We're going to come down here to our new field and we're going to seed it in grass. And I think the best way to approach this field with a worker is to start at this bottom edge. And have it go across the widest part of the field. Or the longest part of the field, I guess it would be. I need to get out there a little more. That should cover. All right, new grass field. Oh yeah, that's pulling it at the top speed of nine miles an hour. And we're getting an extra two meters on every pass. This is going to do well.
right, the Limpkin is killing it. It's doing really, really well. But we're starting to get into kind of an awkward area here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and finish this up. I'm going to... Whoa. Well. All right, there we go. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and finish this up. I'll bring you back when I've got it fully seated. And then we got to do a couple of other things to it. And we need to sell some things today. So uh, I'll bring you back in just a bit. So I finished spreading lime on the other field. I'm, uh, I spread lime on this field too. I'm not 100% certain that um, spreading lime on top of uh, a planted or a seeded field is the best idea or even if it's going to work. But I'm about 90% confident that it will. <laughs> So it was a risk I was willing to take to make sure that our grass field was going to be as productive as possible. So I'm going to go ahead and fertilize this field. I haven't seeded the other field yet, so I'm going to wait until after I'm done seeding that field before I fertilize the first time. Uh, neither of these fields is going to need herbicide because they're both freshly plowed. So I'll get back to you when I'm done fertilizing. Well, I was almost done fertilizing that field, and as you can see, I'm pretty much out of gas. So I need to install a, a fuel tank so that I can uh, I can have fuel here on the farm. Running out of fuel in this game is no fun at all. You, you're either going to have to buy a piece of equipment and go get fuel and bring it back, and it's just a big mess. Especially if you don't have um, super strength. I have I have picked up my tractor before and carried it to a gas station <laughs> to fill it up. So uh, we're not going to be doing any of that here. So I do want to install a fuel tank. Let's see. Container. And we'll do something reasonable. 5,000 gallons. That should do it. Not terribly expensive. Let's see what time. Where's the there's the trigger, and we'll just put it here next to everything else. This can be our little maintenance station. And speaking of maintenance, between uh oh, we got the Unimog problem again. I'm gonna have to restart. <laughs> I don't know what that issue is. Anyway. Oops, that's not right. Nope, that's not right either. Uh-oh. Did we get it too close? We might have gotten it too close. <laughs> oh, you stinking Unimog. I don't know. Let me turn on my help menu so I can see where we are. Am I not going to be able to fill this up because my pressure washer is too close? Oh, okay, let's move this. And one of the handiest mods I've ever installed. It feels sometimes a little cheaty, but uh, there is a mod that will allow me to sell whatever I have purchased. Uh, buildings, not equipment. But uh, if I buy a building and I placed it in the wrong place or uh, something's wrong with it, I can immediately, or not even immediately, if I sell it on the same day, I get all my money back. So basically what I've done is, is allow returns. <laughs> as long as it's on the same day, I can return it for the same amount of money. 
So we're going to go ahead and we might as well. We're going to use it. Well, let's go with 2,000. Wait. Yeah, let's go with 2,000 liters. That's a little more attractive right now. We can refill it if we need to. All right, let's get some fuel. I want to get some fuel and finish up uh, the fertilizing, and then we'll talk again. So I, I didn't finish my thought about maintenance costs. Between uh, FS19 and FS22, maintenance costs rose dramatically. Not just a little bit, a whole bunch. It got a lot more expensive to maintain uh, machinery. And also... Uh, the old system in 19 of buying used equipment was was great. Number one, you could buy anything used. If it existed, it had a used equivalent. It wasn't uh, just a, a, a random piece of equipment in the sale. But, but that's not the only thing that changed. Also, maintenance on used equipment... Uh, Look at the maintenance on this on this tractor right now. I'm I did a full repair of this tractor in the previous episode, I believe. And we're already about almost halfway down. So uh I I did a little adjustment of the setting. There is a mod that will let you adjust both the cost of maintenance and the interval of maintenance and painting so uh i turned that down to about 25 percent of what the game wants to do so that maintenance won't come around quite so often i left the cost of maintenance at about 75 percent well exactly 75 percent of what the game wants to charge you um so we're still going to have to pay a decent price for maintenance but it's just not going to come around as often i mean this is ridiculous half of what i did last month has already gone away and, and that doesn't that's not really very realistic so i think we've hit kind of a space now where it's actually going to work like it should work and not cost us an arm and a leg to own a used piece of equipment because that's just not the way it is in real life all right, so everything has been fertilized and uh, limed. Ooh, I want to run over here real quick, and I want to look at this field. It should show. It should say that it's 50% fertilized, and it should not be telling me that it needs lime. And there we are, 50% fertilized. It doesn't say it needs lime. Uh, it says we have grass and that it's growing. So I think that worked out just fine. So let's sell a few things. All right, so we customize to a bale trailer at zero cost. Uh, I have made the decision that I am going to go ahead and use universal auto load. You know, mods are made for a reason. And most of the time, that reason is to make the game more playable for more people to maybe eliminate some of those things that are irritating enough to keep people from playing the game. And I think universal auto load is there because without it, for me, in my opinion, the game then becomes front loader simulator. You may like to use a front loader. I do not. So I'm going to go with universal auto load uh, I may decide to charge myself some money as if I'm paying somebody to load my trailers for me. But for right now, I don't think that's necessarily necessary. <laughs> so uh, we're going to go ahead and load this up. And it should load them two layers deep. Well, no, it won't. It's only going to load up one layer. All right. I can live with that. 
it's still going to take far less time than it would take if I were front loading. These would probably sell for a higher price if I took them to town, but I'm not going to right now. Don't think any more are going to spawn, or they would have. Donuts are money. And by the way, so is this pig food over here. See, the pig food stacks up just fine. It must be the donuts that don't want to stack on top of each other. So let's see, we have 7,000 liters of pig food. Let's see what we get for it. $31,685 or 7,000 liters of a byproduct that we weren't even trying to make. That's pig food. The power of pig food. All right, we got a few hours left until dark. I really want to get this field seeded so it'll start growing. I um I did a, some research and I and I kind of already knew this, but I wanted to look and confirm. Um I was trying to think of what we could plant to make flour with. Um the highest yielding crop that we could use would be barley. Barley has a conversion rate in our little mill of uh i think 31 liters of barley will give us 23 liters of flour and seven liters of pig food so it's it's about a one-to-one -one conversion there um and then uh wheat is a little bit less than that it's a little less yield it's a little less conversion oats gives us a positive conversion um but the yield isn't quite as good and sorghum gives us a, a, a positive conversion, meaning we get more flour than we put in sorghum. And um, neither oats nor sorghum make pig food, which is a nice byproduct to have. But here's the thing that sealed it for me. With seasons off, barley takes about six months to grow. Well, it, it takes six months to grow. And sorghum takes four months to grow. So in the time that I can grow two crops of barley, I can grow three crops of sorghum. And I think in the long run, we end up with more grain in the same amount of time. So that is my thinking. I could be dead wrong. Let me know in the comments if I am, but we're gonna plant sorghum. And that means we'll have three sorghum fields. So I'm, I'm truly sorry if you're bored. <laughs> with watching me do sorghum over and over and over again but it's kind of the crop we need to grow right now so that's what we're gonna do
very good. All of our fields are now growing crops. We have a couple of fields that we're going to need to make next month. Whoops. All right, it's lowered. And it's on. Huh. Well, that is certainly odd behavior. It's not seeding those little spots. And I'm not worried about it too much. Because the rest of that field is seeded just fine. Well, we have had a very productive April. We made a lot of changes in our equipment. We've got some extra land now that we're going to be producing even more sorghum than we were before. I think our next goal is going to be to buy another plot of land to increase our grass production so that we can get some cows. If we can increase our grass production so that we can feed cows and feed the BGA, we're going to be in very, very good shape because we can also feed the BGA silage and increase our income even more. But that is for a future episode. Uh, if you... Sorry, Bud distracted me. He does that. But the part of this that was grass before does not need fertilization. So we're just going to fertilize the part that had sugar beets in it. And we should be just fine. So I'm going to finish this up and sleep. But that's going to do it for this video. If you like this video, I sure would appreciate a thumbs up or a subscription. If you did not like this video, please post a comment and tell me why. Either way, thanks so much for being here. Me and Bud will see you next time.